Hi, I'm Ron Falk, designer of the Falk Workbench. I just got myself the new SawStop job site work saw, and today I'm going to unbox it, set it up, take a quick look at it, and give you my first impression. Okay, I'm going to tackle setting up my new uh, job site uh, table saw from SawStop. This is their uh, brand new saw that just came out. I've liked their uh, products for a long time, but the previous saws were, or the other, other saws are a little too big for my mobile work style. And so when they came out with this, and the idea that uh, I had that extra safety, hopefully never use it, just like the airbags in my car, but it, I'd li I like the idea of having it there. So I'm going to set it up. I haven't opened it. Uh, I looked at it in the store very closely. You'll get to see from beginning to end how this, uh, how this goes. Well, as you saw from setting it up, it didn't take much. It's pretty well pre-assembled. I had to bolt on the wheels and the two handles and snap on the handle to uh, raise the blade. That was it. I have ran a couple of pieces of wood through it, have uh, played around with adjusting height and tilt, and I have to say I'm very impressed. This is a well-made saw. Accurate, my first cut at an inch and a half was exactly an inch and a half, right off the tape measure. The fence seems to be a real solid fence, very easy to adjust. I don't have a handle sticking out, just a push of a button and it slides very smoothly. With the uh, fence in the short position, the rail, I can go out to 13 and a half inches and then simply by lifting this lever I can slide out my rip capacity to 25 and a half. There is this gap here uh, when you're sliding this and using somewhere in between the outside and the inside and they've got a really interesting uh, turn of this right here and it slides out a, uh, a shelf that will hold up any of the material. You can see how it slides off the bottom. Very easy to just turn this lever on the top here and that slides in and out. Always remember when you're getting into the blade compartments or changing blades on any of your tools, your miter saw, your router, make sure you take the power off just in case. So accessing the where the blade goes is quite simple. Uh, with this uh, handle here to raise up the blade. One of my favorite things so far as compared to all of the table saws I've had in the past where you crank them up and down. This has a single turn to go from all the way down to all the way up. Very smooth. The throat plate, you just push a button and it pops out. Then without any tools, I just flip a lever and the guard pops right off. And right behind the saw here, there is blade storage and wrench storage without any tools, just a turn, and the tools pop off, and then I can remove the blade. It, they provide a toolbox that slides out, 
miter gauge to slide, slide in the track, uh, some Allen wrenches, and also a riving knife. So if I'm not using the guard, I can just drop the riving knife in. And then to tilt the blade, there's a collar, and I just have to pull that in and just tip it. It can go all the way over, all the way up, or anywhere in between. And then if I want to adjust just a little bit, there is a, an adjustment here, a, a tilt adjustment, where I can turn it to fine tune it. The on and off switch, again, I have the power uh, pulled here, so there's no power to it. But you turn this on, there's a series of lights. It, it uh, will go to green when it's ready, and then there's a large switch there to, uh, which, gives, which is nice uh, for turn off. It's easy to just reach under and pop that. So you're not going to accidentally switch it on because you have to reach underneath it and pull it out. As you know from the marketing of Saw Stop, their um, really niche in the market is to create a saw that's safer to use if your body ever comes into contact with the blade it has a mechanism and you can see this demonstrated online i use a hot dog at, at shows to do this but there's this mechanism that is inside and it essentially and this is my interpretation you'll have to check their website to see exactly how it works but it's electronic and it and it uh, detects the current uh, when your skin comes in contact with the blade and it basically jams this block of aluminum up into the blade and stops it instantly. And the demonstration I've seen, uh, it barely nicks uh, the skin of the hot dog. And these obviously are one-time use, they plug in. Um, and so once they are uh, come in contact with the blade, it damages the blade and this, but then you just pop in a new one of these and put a new blade on and you're ready to go. So I have an extra, uh, this one's actually uh, one that is designed for the 8-inch dado blade. So if I uh, want to set this up for dado, then I would swap this out with the other one that's in there set up for the 10-inch. And I also have a uh, dado plate. This one set up uh, when I actually do my first dado, then I'll just cut through this. So I have to decide if I'm going to stick with the stand. Fortunately, it's very close to the height I need for my uh, workbench. It's a half an inch taller than, um, than my benches, so I would have to make an adjustment to my sawhorses. On, uh, like I, I like to have all my benches the same, so I would adjust them all that half an inch. The other option I have is to see if I can come up with a way to not use the stand and then use the same system I've used with my other table saws and hang it off the saw. That's my preferred method. I'd rather have uh, have it be a little less bulky and not have the stand, but it is a much heavier saw than my other ones, and so I may find that just rolling it on the job and setting it up may be the way to go. But again, I'll figure that out over time. I want to make sure that it's the right saw for me and uh, that I want to stick with it before I make any modifications. Well, thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.